All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 88. Uh, today, we're going to be having a quick look at the Walther PPQ 45. Let's get down to it. All right. Oh yeah. All right, guys. You know, we've already had a look at some of the Walther offerings. Uh, we had a PPQ threaded nine millimeter that we took out and uh, did a video on at one point. Uh, we were bumming around over at Moss one day and uh, Kevin up there, he uh, mentioned, he's like, hey, you should take out this uh, PPQ 45 and give it a look. This is a used gun that came into Moss and we decided to uh, take it out and put a few rounds through it. Uh, I am a PPQ nine millimeter uh, owner. I do own the 9mm version with the threaded barrel, and I do want to provide a little bit of feedback on that. Uh, remember in that video we broke the slide stop? I broke the slide stop. It's actually Brandy's gun. I broke her slide stop. Allow me to uh, just make sure, because she's probably watching. She's going to let you broke my gun. So I broke Brandy's slide stop on her PPQ. And uh, so anyway, you know, we got in contact with Walther, and they were very, I, I just want to make mention, just kind of as a follow up. They were extremely professional about it. Um, that's really been about the only Achilles heel on these PPQs is some people reporting uh, slide stops breaking. And I'm gonna show you kind of what I'm talking about there. Uh, the disassembly on this gun is so super easy. This is one of the easiest guns to take apart. So make sure she's empty, squeeze the trigger. You got this little tab right here on each side, just pull them down and the gun will just kind of, the, the slide will just shift forward and then look, that's it. Uh, so what we were referring to with the actual slide stop is there's a little bar on the slide stop that when the follower goes up and interacts with it, it basically holds the slide stop, uh, slide stop up on the last round. That is what broke off on my 9mm PPQ. So I don't know how these are in terms of longevity. Um, really, it just kind of depends on how you look at that. Um, they do make good on it. If something breaks, they're, gonna, you know, they're obviously going to take care of you. Um, but that is really the only thing that I've seen people reporting as being a potential issue on the PPQs is some, not all, but some of the slide stops uh, breaking. But other than that, you do have an ambidextrous magazine release. Now, it's not ambidextrous in that it can just be changed out. They actually provide an additional mag uh, magazine release. So if you want the right side, left side, you just change it out and they do provide that, which is really cool. This gun also utilizes interchangeable back straps knock this roll pin out and you can get a little bit more. Uh, the one that's in it right now is the small and this is the large. So they do have an extended back strap for those of you that have really big hands, which is handy. Um, 12 shot magazine. So it is a double stack. It is a very girthy frame. Uh, I will say though that the frame on this particular gun feels a heck of a lot more comfortable than like a Glock Model 21. Don't get me wrong, I love Glocks, but the Model 21 feels like you're holding a 2x4. Um, I would almost, like, this gun also has a very, very high bore axis, so I'm going to put the gun back together. All right, it does have a metal guide rod, which is nice, a full-length metal guide rod, so, you know, I see really good longevity there. It is striker-fired, and the bore axis is also very high. Um, it almost has, dare I say, a high point-like appearance. Uh, what would you say, this is a German high point? perhaps would be the way we could look at that. But look, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but the bore axis is a little bit deliberate and a little bit tall. And in some of the rapid fire uh, shooting, you're gonna get a little bit more muzzle flip. Now, the thing I do like about this gun for sure is that it's priced right. So if you're wanting a semi-auto 45, you know, something um, that's real easy uh, to work with and relatively inexpensive to buy, uh, these guns can be had for pretty reasonable money. So compared to other options on the market, it's definitely a good way to get into a high cap 45 without spending a ton of money. 
It is a polymer frame. Um, it has a lot of features about it that are kind of neat. I mean, you do have the forward and rearward cocking serrations, uh, which is kind of nice. It does have, you know, when we're talking about the slide stop and some of the potential issues that some people have encountered on the slide stops, one thing we do see is we look at this extractor and it's a very large and robust uh, extractor. So a nice big beefy extractor on this gun, which I really don't see as posing a potential problem at all. Uh, the ejector looks to be pretty much what you would expect in a gun like this. And then you have a full Picatinny rail up here for lights, accessories, uh, things of that nature. Uh, the slide stop is ambidextrous. So guys, in terms of features, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, some of you are, well, there are, I'm all thumbs today. Some of you, you know, are obviously going to look up various features, um, but that's just kind of like a really quick spill on the features uh, of the gun just as I see it. Not terrible. Uh, the grip texture is a little bit, uh, it's not bad. It doesn't have a ton of grippy texture. It's not quite what you would expect out of, let's just say, a carry pistol. I'd probably want maybe a little bit more texture on the, on the grip itself. Let's shoot the gun a little bit more. All right, 12-shot mags, relatively generous capacity. We'll talk a little bit more as we go. Accuracy's decent. It's got a wonderful trigger. That's one thing I notice. Guys, look, oh, we had a, I didn't pick up that last round out of the magazine, huh? One thing I will say about this gun, it's definitely accurate, okay? Nice, smooth recoil impulse, nice shooting gun for a 45, not bad at all. Uh, one thing on the, the sights that I will mention, uh, if you've ever handled a, a Walther P22, or even the PPQ or any of the other, you know, PPX, PPQ, uh, you'll notice the sights are a little bit kind of on the fragile side. Uh, you know, they, they are just plastic sights, but that's not unlike a Glock pistol. I mean, guys, let's be fair here. If you're handling a Glock, I mean, Glocks from the factory have sights that leave a bit to be desired. So uh, I would say the sights are on par, if not maybe even a little bit better than what's on a Glock. Um, just a three dot arrangement, real easy to pick up and uh, boy, uh, very, very nice accuracy. Um, I, I don't really picture this as being an ideal carry gun because it is kind of blocky and big. I would imagine it would print really easy, but if you just want a 45 to take out the range and have fun with, this is a great range pistol because, man, she really is accurate. All right, let's see if we can uh, accurize our gopher down there. That's kind of a, a long shot, but let's try it. Not too bad. All right, we got hollow points inbound. We're going to have a look at that in a second. All right, this is some of the Browning 230 grain ball. The reason we're testing it, it does have kind of an odd ogive on the shape of the bullet. Uh, what we were running there for the first parts of the video was some Freedom Munitions 230 grain ball. This is Browning. We'll see how it picks up on that. All right, one thing I want to make mention of that I didn't notice before, there is a loaded chamber indicator. When the pistol slide is in battery and it overcomes the rim of the cartridge, there's a little red bit of paint right there. And it's very intuitive and easy to pick up on. I actually noticed it without even paying attention to it. I looked down and I saw the red inside of the channel uh, of the uh, extractor cut and I immediately realized that it was a loaded chamber indicator. So that's something really cool. That's, that's a nice subtle touch to this gun, which I like. All right. Not bad. Yeah, look at that. Slide stuck to the rear again. Now, earlier I noticed Chad was test firing this pistol and he was riding the slide stop up a couple of times. And I almost wonder if I'm riding up the slide stop or if it's just something that's going on with the gun 
Both Chad and I are doing it. So we'll see when Chad shoots it, if he rides a slide stop up, uh, slide stop up or not. I don't really feel like, because this is such a huge gun, I don't feel like I'm coming into contact with a slide stop. So take that for what it is. All right, now we got a couple of varieties of hollow point ammunition here. We're gonna run some Winchester PDX and we're gonna hit some sodas. One, because we want to just see how it digests some carry ammunition. And two, because, I mean, obviously, shooting sodas with, uh, with hollow points is always a good day. All right. Let's hit a couple of sodas here. Tell you what, let me just test it real quick, on, uh, see where it's hitting for me on this plate. Let's see what we got. Maybe just a scotch low, but not bad. That PDX is pretty hot. I, I definitely notice a bit more of a, uh, a recoil impulse on that compared to uh, the ball that we're shooting, but all right, here we go. We're gonna take out a couple of sodas with the uh, PDX from Winchester here. Really? There we go. Not terrible if I could do my part. Okay, this is some of the Browning, uh, is that BH, B, BXP, X-Point carry ammo that we happen to have laying around. Uh, it's kind of a value-minded, value-priced uh, 45 carry load. We'll see how this does against a couple of sodas, just for fun. And, you know, we're just testing different carry stuff, see how it digests this ammo. Not bad. Not terrible at all. Um, one thing I do notice, those carry rounds definitely got some a little bit more recoil. Um, this is a fairly light gun, so you are gonna, you know, with a 45, you're gonna get a little bit of recoil there. Not terrible. Um, I'm gonna shoot just a couple more mags and maybe John here will load one more for me. We'll finish out with three mags. I'm going to let Chad have a couple of shots with it. Um, this is a used gun. Uh, this is one that Michelle was nice enough to let us borrow. Uh, I don't own this gun. Uh, as a guy that owns a PPQ 9mm, I should say my wife owns a PPQ 9mm. Um, it's nice. It definitely reminds me. I mean, it's a PPQ tried and true. Um, I'm a fan of the PPQ, and I've always liked them. Uh, the 40s and the 9s, I have to say, probably my favorite at this point over the 45. Can't really say I'm a huge fan of this gun. Although, I don't know, if, if they offered this with maybe a, a threaded barrel, which I'm pretty sure at this point they already have one of these with a threaded barrel, uh, as an you know, inexpensive suppressor host, because the bore axis is so high and because the sights are relatively high, you might be, you might be able to see over the top of a can, possibly, if it was threaded, but... You know, maybe something like this with some high night sights, a threaded barrel would be an inexpensive uh, suppressor host, which honestly is why I bought the PPQ 9mm. I found it used uh, at a local gun shop, and the price was just so fair, I was like, well, heck, why not? Um, you know, I figured just as an inexpensive suppressor host, that's kind of what, what got me into uh, the PPQ 9mm. So this is cool. Um, I, I probably wouldn't rush out and buy one myself personally, but it's definitely a nice pistol. It's made well and it's priced reasonably. And for those of you that want a, a 45, that's not a ton of money. It's definitely a good option for you. Look, I'm gonna tell you something right now, guys. This gun's accurate, okay? This gun is accurate. You can't, you can't hate it for, for, for not being accurate. That's for sure. She shoots, man, really does. All right, a couple of long range shots for the road. Well, 
Well, if I can hit what I'm aiming at, but anyway, not terrible. Um, the gun certainly shows some very promising accuracy potential, which I'm not surprised because the PPQ, when we took that particular gun out, the nine millimeter, and we, we broke the slide stop on like morons because we didn't read the manual. That's a mouthful, but it is what it is. When we took that particular gun out, it was very accurate with the suppressor. And, uh, you know, just like the 9mm and the 40s are pretty accurate, I don't really see, you know, I, I didn't expect the 45 to not deliver in the accuracy realm. Um, man, I don't know. I mean, it's an awesome gun. I, I probably myself would not buy one, but that's just me. Uh, it depends on what you like. If, if it's something that where you want a 45 for not a ton of money, it's a great option. Guys, it's accurate. Seems to be well made enough. Magazines are relatively generous. Maybe add a threaded barrel option, and this would be a great suppressor hose for somebody that doesn't want to spend a ton of money on a 45. Um, I'm going to load up a few uh, more mags, let Chad have a go. Let's see how he shoots this gun. All right, guys, I'm going to take a few shots with the uh, Walther PPQ 45. And yes, I'm wearing my enemy at the gates coat again because it's cold here in Georgia. I'll take a few shots with this thing. Like Eric mentioned, we were shooting it just a little bit earlier, and I wasn't riding the slide stop up. I was actually, I think, riding it down. My thumb was depressing it, and it was keeping the slide from locking to the rear on the last shot. I'm gonna try to keep my thumb like off of the frame. That is one complaint I do have about this particular handgun. That slide stop is huge. It's massive. Huge, huge, huge. <laughs> and uh, it does take a little bit of uh, kind of getting used to and kind of fixing your grip to accommodate that particular issue. Just. Depends on your hand size and everything else, but all right, take a few shots here. 45. <laughs> all right, so at the tail end of that magazine, I noticed that my thumb was on this slide stop. So that's exactly what it is. Yep, empty mag. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make a conscious effort to keep my daggum big old fat thumb off of this stupid slide stop. You're about to make an unconscious effort when you get knocked out. Probably. <laughs> Ooh, that browning ammo is a little bit hotter. Yeah, it is. It's got a little more uh, steam to it. <laughs> the joys of shooting steel. I got a little lead spall on me. <laughs> Check that out. All right. This thing does have a considerable uh, flip to it, being that the bore axis is so high. Um, I do prefer the 9mm. I'm, I'm not much of a 45 guy, but uh, this particular handgun, just very tall, just really flips in the hand uh, quite a bit. Let's run some more of that browning. That ammo is uh, is hot. Yeah, it is. All right. Let's see what it'll do to that gopher back there, if I can hit him. Keep my thumb off the slide stop. Whoa! I mean, if you do your part, this gun shoots. It's real accurate, man. Oh, yeah. I mean... Man, it definitely gets them in there. All right. Yeah, that uh, that <laughs> brownie ammo is, is hot. Let's try some of this freedom. It's a little bit more tame. <clears throat> Not bad. I'm getting hit in the head with all that brass. <laughs> well, that's one thing I noticed uh, when I was over there filming earlier when Eric's, uh, Eric was shooting is the uh, ejection pattern is very nice and consistent and it's got a good solid ejection too. It doesn't just poop this brass out. I mean, it gets that brass out of there. I like how dang accurate it is. <sighs> For, For what money. it is, 
and the money that these things cost i mean these are i think sub 500 dollars guns yeah new i mean use these things can be had for very very little money all right 40 yards yeah Nice. I mean, high play, dude. All right, that little lonely uh, pepper popper right there. Oh, pfft. I just grazed him. There we go. All right, little six-inch popper back there, twenty-five or so yards. Oh yeah. Shoot. Got some of them there hollow points there, boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll get you on some of them. Some of them there hollow points. I got you. Soda salt they were gonna get away today. Ugh. All right, that's 35 yards. Not bad. Trigger is quite phenomenal on this gun. Dare I say, uh, better than a Glock out of the box, for sure, I mean. Hard to, some uh, PDX. Oh, cool. That's full mag. That's full mag, and that's the PDX Winchester stuff? Yeah. Okay. Took a few headshots. Or try to. Real accurate. Go. Not bad. Takes a little getting used to. Uh, I had to change my grip just to keep my thumb off of that slide stop, but... Uh, Seems to be working out quite well. Haven't had any um, any issues since I changed my grip, so. All right, so 75 yards. Oh, that's a browning werewolf killing bullets, huh? Yep. Okay. All right, 75. Very acceptable accuracy. You spoke too soon. Yeah, but that's further than you'll ever shoot a handgun. 75 yards is a long way. All right, Sody Pops. This gun's growing on me a little bit. Me too. Just a little bit. Makes me want to go take my nine out. My PPQ nine. Well, I should say Brandy's nine. Brandy's nine. What's yours is hers and what's hers is hers? Is that how that works? No, what's hers is hers and what's yours is hers. Yours is hers, that's right. I'm all like, all backwards today. Yeah, you are. Well, pfft. That first shot was right to the left. That second shot was just to the right. I mean, I can see the thing sailing down range. That stuff's pretty hot. <laughs> it disappeared. For my next trick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Man, what draining the soda. All right, let's see what one of those will do to that little six inch popper there. That gummit. That ammo's got some power. Nice. Man, that muzzle flip is Here, just... I'll load you up some more. Yeah, that muzzle flip is killing me. All right, let's see what these uh, Brownings... What's this called again? Uh, BXP. BXP. Yep. Uh, made, formulated especially for were werewolves. Dude, that is crazy. Creatures of the night. Filva. It's nice. All right. Sody Pops. Werewolf killing well, it's bolts. eating everything we can throw in it. <laughs> Not bad. Dude. Get out of here. <laughs> all right, that's enough. <laughs> that's like I've had about all the 45 I can handle today. Oh, you big sissy, it's just a 45. 
I ain't turning and shooting your nine all the time. You just a wimp. Well, you said it. Well, I can hear the comments now. Bye. More hollow points. Why don't you group those PDXs on that one plate there that hasn't been shot yet? Oh, no, it's, it's been shot. I just missed. Oh, okay. Shot Several at. Several times. <laughs> I shot at, yes. <laughs> All right, so, eh, 15 yards. <sighs> Aiming for the bolt. Yeah, go for it. Perfectly yeah. adequate. Very adequate. You said that was enough. I'll shoot Why one didn't more. give you the mag? Why'd you load it? It's on shoot the table. It. It's on the table. Shoot it. That's the rule on the range. If there's a loaded magazine on the table, it's got to go. I can't God. take them home. Can't take them home. <laughs> Not bad. I mean, 12 yards away, 10 inch targets. I have to say it's growing on me just a little bit, but still that high bore axis, it's got a lot more muzzle flip than something like a 1911 does, although it doesn't have the weight because it's polymer frame, a little bit easier to carry and stuff, but it is a big, big handgun for the size, but very generous capacity. I mean, I'd have to say if I was in the market for a 45 to carry and I wanted something with more capacity than a, like a single stack, uh, like what, a G, what, 36 or whatever, something like that. Overall, I do like the gun. It's got a uh, fairly good grip texture on here. I'd probably put some grip tape or something on there if I was going to carry this thing all the time. Um, but overall, pretty feature packed pistol for the money, especially on the used market. And like we said earlier, this one did come from Moss out of the used counter. So substantial price savings over a new gun. And you get a lot of bang for the buck, but like I said, the high bore axis kind of turns me off just a little bit. That excess flip, uh, being such a, a lightweight polymer frame gun, it's not one that I would rush out to buy uh, for certain, but I'm sure that there are some folks that um, would be interested in something like this, you know, for a 45 in their collection or a 45 to use for home defense or whatever the case is. Um, that large slide stop, slide release, does take a little bit of getting used to. It's one thing that sort of turns me off about this design. It's just I have to modify my grip that I use on pretty much every other handgun that I ever fire in order to fire this one properly without, you know, having some sort of failure to extract or, or whatever the case is, some sort of failure overall. But regardless, hope you guys enjoyed the video today and uh, just this look at this PPQ 45. This is a neat gun, very affordable and feature packed for the money. Hope you enjoyed this look at the PPQ45. Stay tuned. We've got a ton more on the way. We'll talk to you later.